even start to solve a homicide case when you don't know who the victim is. It's a problem that's plagued Monroe County detectives since 2011. But a crucial piece of the puzzle may be falling into place. It's something that's already helped crack cold cases all around the country. Here's our Jamie Stover with part one of her series, Solving the Unsolved. For a long time, DNA was used almost like a fingerprint. If you had two samples, one from a crime scene and one from a suspect, scientists could tell you if they matched. But if you didn't have two matching samples, DNA wasn't all that useful. Now, DNA is being treated like a blueprint. First and six, a grisly discovery in the Poconos. It was our top story that night in 2011, just a day after Christmas. State police in Monroe County say a human torso was found wrapped in trash bags on the side of the road on Monday. It's a pretty remote wooded area. It still is wooded and remote off of Route 191 in Paradise Township. Now, investigators think that there may be actually more body parts in that wooded area. They never did find those other limbs. The coroner hasn't been able to identify the victim. Not even now, some seven years later. We're still at that, you know, first step. Who is he? That's Michael Mancuso, the county's first assistant district attorney. He's still working on the case. It's an active murder investigation. Sean Williams is a retired state police corporal with 200 homicide investigations under his belt. This has been one of his more challenging ones. Not a lot of leads. There were no witnesses, no one to describe the man who died, let alone who killed him, chopped him, and tossed him. Then, in 2016, a possible break in the case. Police were able to put out this composite describing what the victim may have looked like. What we're able to do is basically give them a genetic witness. Ellen Graytack is the director of bioinformatics at Parabon Nano Labs outside of D.C. They created this phenotype, the image, from information in the unknown man's DNA. It predicts eye color, skin tone, ancestry, hair color, whether the person has freckles. They're not perfect, but they get pretty close. Take a look at this phenotype they created for a different case and a photo of the man it ended up being. The Paradise Township prediction hasn't brought in any leads. So far, he hasn't matched any known missing persons. That, that is very odd. That is very odd. Phenotyping alone can't always get them there. And for a while, that was where the story would have ended. But then a breakthrough in DNA technology and a national obsession with finding our roots changed everything. Next, how something you may have gotten for Christmas could help catch a killer. Yesterday, in part one, we told you about the discovery of an unknown man's torso in the Poconos and how his DNA helped detectives craft an image of what he may have looked like. Today, we go a step further. That same DNA sample can be used to track down the man's family. Sounds like a pipe dream, but it's working. Genetics got the Golden State Killer 50 years later. It also solved a Lancaster County case. All because people have submitted their DNA to online databases to find out more about their ancestry. Lancaster teacher Christy Mirak was brutally killed December 21st, 1992. For decades, her case sat unsolved. No clues, no leads, no suspects. Her murderer was never even on police's radar until 25 years later when police got the break they needed. Today, we are announcing the arrest of Raymond Charles Rowe for the murder of Christy Mirak from December 21st, 1992. I knew it had to be Raymond Rowe. From nearly 3,000 miles away, a woman named Cece Moore, all the way out in California, led police to the man known locally as D. J. Freeze. That moment was very heavy, very emotional, and extremely sad. It really uh, breathed a breath of air into a cold case. It ended up solving it. Roe was arrested and pleaded guilty after that. Retired State Police Corporal Sean Williams hopes Moore's work will do the same for the Paradise Township Torso, a mystery body part found in a garbage bag off of Route 191 in a wooded area of Monroe County back in 2011. Its identity still a mystery. I think that this just ups the game. Moore isn't a police officer or a detective. She doesn't even work in law enforcement. She's a genetic genealogist, self-taught. 
She uses the same tools people use to find out their family tree to help investigators identify unknown victims and suspects. DNA samples from crime scenes are uploaded to a website called GEDmatch, a website everyday people use every day to find out more about themselves. The crime scene DNA is compared to everyone else who's in that database, and then based on uh, who shares significant amounts of DNA with that unknown suspect, we get a list of matches. Those matches, if there are any, are in some way related to the unknown person. She figures out how sometimes going back as far as a fifth cousin. More can use that combined with marriage and birth records, newspaper clippings, and social media to build a family tree. Hopefully, then attach a name to the DNA taken from a crime scene, or at the very least, narrow down a pool of suspects. Maybe to one branch of a family tree, for example. I'd say about 60% of the cases are resolvable over time and collaboration with the law enforcement agency. The DNA from that torso was recently uploaded. To date, no hits. That's not death to the case, though. Gen Match's user base is getting bigger every day, especially since so many people got DNA kits like 23andMe for Christmas. So even if we don't have the data to identify them today, we certainly might in a month. It worked for Christy Mirak. Maybe it could help find who was lost in paradise. Hopefully it'll be a game changer in this case. Jamie Stover, 69 News.